So I just got done watching Ingmar Bergman's Wild Strawberries, and oh my lordy, is it a good film. So I watched this the other night, I kind of came home, I was like, you know what, I'm in the mood for a film, but you know, I don't want anything too long, you know, I don't want to watch some three hour epic, and I don't want to watch some crazy fast action film, I'm like, no, I could be going for a character drama, you know, character study film. So I'm looking through my watch list, and I'm just kind of going through films, and I'm like, you know what, I could watch these, but not really in the mood, and then I spot Wild Strawberries by Ingmar Bergman, a film I didn't really have expectations for, but I just went, oh, okay, checked it out, 90 minute runtime. it's on YouTube as well, anyone can watch it, um, fantastic. Anyway, find Wild Strawberries, and I watch it, and I, I had no expectations going into this, like, I knew it was going to be good, it's one of his more famous films, I think, he has a big, big repertoire of films, but when you think Ingmar Bergman, you're probably thinking Benny and Alexander, Seventh Seal, and Persona, probably, but Wild Strawberries, I was kind of like, yeah, it's somewhere on the list. Oh my god, it is so fucking brilliant. Probably my favorite Bergman so far. I've only seen Persona and the Seventh Seal, actually. I've been meaning to get around to the television cut of Benny and Alexander, because I've only seen the theatrical version, but... I don't know, this might be better than Fanny and Alexander, it's really hard to judge. I really, really like Wild Strawberries though. So if you haven't seen it, then my recommendation would be to fucking go watch it, because it's fantastic. I'd recommend this to anyone uh, interested in character study films, which is a lot of good cinema, but uh, it's just, it's so perfect in that aspect, so if you don't want the film spoiled, then go away and watch it now. You'll probably enjoy it because it is a brilliant piece of cinema. So pretty much the film takes place over a whole day, uh, just one day. However, it's just handled so masterfully in this. I mean, on top of the fact that Bergman's writing is always just, there's just some element to it that's just really lovely. It's his camera work in these like dream sequences that really is like the, the cherry on top for this film. Like I said, I had no idea what this film was about, I had no expectations for it, and about five minutes in, you get this really good sense of who the characters are, which is a little difficult in some films, but you really kind of get it going, and then there's this fantastic nightmarish dream sequence that is so uncanny in that it doesn't use any crazy surreal aspects, it doesn't trip out of your mind, LSD trip, it isn't some sort of like Yodorovsky dark fantasy Dune-esque shit. It's it's just it's it's shot in this really high contrast, very barren kind of street. It's just it's very, very unnerving with the smallest amount of like special effects, but they've just used like sound and visuals to the Action. Far more effective than if you just had some crazy trip out scary shit uh, because you have things where you can hear sounds coming and they just cut away instantly when things leave the shot uh, and you know things that actually happen when you're dreaming. Yeah, so the sequence in the beginning is just brilliant, really, really unnerving. I totally, you know, didn't expect it. I was just kind of like, okay, it's getting in, introducing the characters, main character of Isaac, who is an old doctor, very kind of grumpy, kept away, very cold, and really the film follows him, but it kind of characters get introduced as he's traveling with his daughter-in-law, uh, who's just broken up with Isaac's son because they're having a child. It's It gets a little bit complicated uh, in terms of family relations, but all of it is tied so nicely together. The character interactions are really nice to watch because all the characters are developed, and then as Isaac is traveling with his daughter-in-law to an airport somewhere, they pick up hitchhikers and then their car breaks down, and eventually more characters are introduced. Isaac goes back to his old family home, and he pretty much reenacts parts of his childhood, uh, but as himself as an old man. And you know, you get this character development where he doesn't exactly change from being an icy, kind of very cold, detached person, but it's kind of revealed through a lot of very sparse dialogue that he just kind of seeks people's appreciation, and he was kind of rejected as a child, 
and kind of has to like push that away but all that aside that's not really important in terms of plot elements it's more the fact that there's just this brilliant brilliant subtlety to the film that I really find missing in a lot of other films that are similar to this. The first one that immediately came to mind when I was watching this was uh, Carl Thayer's Ordet or Orday, I actually don't know how to pronounce it, it's never spoken in the film. Uh, but just as this is a character interaction film, I didn't really like Ordet. It's not a bad film, just people rave about it and I just I didn't really like it. I like Joan of the Arc. It's a good film, it's brilliant. But not Odette, I just didn't get Odette. It's a very good film, don't get me wrong. But it's just that subtlety that is missing that is in Wild Strawberries that makes it so fucking good. It is probably one of the closest films I'd say to being perfect in that it absolutely nails the style it's going for. Everything about it is just the writing flows beautifully with the visuals, but it's very very subtle in the way it does it in that You know you can watch like a Kubrick film and you can be like wow the visuals look incredible because they're very Very well framed and everything's symmetrical or you can watch a Tarkovsky film and look at the placement of objects and shit like that But with this it's just these really subtle camera angles that the film gets going. It's this really very very creepy feeling the film can get during the dream sequences. It's these great shots you can get during the family sequences that really feel like you're there and it's just just tiny little tweaks. The film's really good at having little off bits of dialogue that kind of reveal things about characters uh, that are never mentioned again so you know if you pick up on them it's like oh that's that's interesting that adds to that character and then it just makes the character interactions and their motives even more interesting but it isn't shoehorned into the plot in that the character has to learn something to overcome a problem or something which is fine in itself but it just works even better here because it's also in the plot it it's just really fucking good <laughs> um i mean i don't know this film actually might break into my top 10 i'd have to re-watch it again or again again so yeah brilliant brilliant film it's not often that you get a film that either totally totally blows you away when you had no expectations for it but also a film like that that potentially you know breaks into your top 10 like I think the last time that would have happened to me would have been the Workmeister Harmonies by Bellatar or Bulatar I don't know how to pronounce any of this shit it's fucking Swedish it's Hungarian I don't know how to fucking speak this shit Bellatar it's, it's you got the English letters and you got the the dots on top of it, I don't fucking know what is this shit. I should really get around to watching the TV version of Fanny and Alexander because I've heard that's the opus on top of the magnum opus, but so far this has probably been my favourite Bergman. While I absolutely fucking adore The Seventh Seal and I think it's a brilliant film, as I do also like Persona, um, I found the Persona probably was missing just a bit, it just felt kind of poorly paced, a little strangely strung together. Um, it wasn't bad in any sense, uh, but Wild Strawberries is just, it's like the seventh seal, but better, and that's like, wow, fantastic. So that was my opinion on it, what did you think of it? If you haven't seen it, fucking go watch it, because it's fucking good! It's a good film! I love it, and... Ciao.